Um, so after the murder of my son, uh, Dylan, at Sandy Hook Elementary School, in, in addition to starting an organization to really create new strategies on how to end gun violence and keep kids safe, I also wanted to explore legal opportunities. Um, and there are two cases uh, that I brought forward, one of them being the Remington case. And this was as a result of the marketing um, the man card campaign in specific, uh, specifically was something that we became aware of, which was a 2010 to 2012 campaign right up to the time of the shooting at Sandy Hook School that really um, focused on the idea that you need to be a man um, in that to have an AR-15 meant you would be a man. And the shooter at Sandy Hook School used the AR-15. So this was part of our effort to try to hold gun manufacturers accountable, but specifically focused on sales and marketing practices. What is a dangerous or deceptive marketing practice? Um, and it, could we change the way firearms are marketed and sold, particularly to young people, particularly to vulnerable males, um, in an effort to get change? So that's why we brought this case early on in the effort to draw public attention to the issue and force change. And what did you find out? Because your case set a lot of precedents. Yeah, so when we, I went to maybe a half dozen different lawyers um, with this case idea, and all of them said this is an unwinnable case and refused to take it. Um, because we have a law in America called PLCIA, the Protection of Lawful Commerce and, and Arms in Action. And it is basically um, allowing gun manufacturers to be completely immune to lawsuits, unless the firearm uh, has a malfunction, that is the only time that you can ever um, go against uh, a manufacturer. And we thought, well, it's nothing is truly immune. There's got to be a way to crack this armor. And we found a lawyer who would take the case and worked with us, but we found a very, very specific niche in terms of Connecticut trade laws. So the fact that it was advertised in Connecticut could be seen by Connecticut people and was seen as unfair and deceptive there. That's how we were able to get traction on our case over the course of many, many years. Um, and it would bounce between different courts. And um, But eventually then Remington went um, bankrupt. So we settled and as part of the settlement demanded that we have full discovery. Um, that led us to all the elements that we had only been able to hypothesize and theorize on it up to that point, but now we had tangible evidence of the marketing practices, when they changed, why they changed, who they were targeting, as well as access to all of their other ads since then. So it really helped create momentum. Um, the fact that the case settled 10 years after the, the, the incident at Sandy Hook meant that what is seen now um, in terms of firearm manufacturer advertising is considerably more egregious um, and has gotten so much worse over the last decade, but those early findings can help us build actions around what we should do to help regulate this industry more appropriately.